I can't remember a time when earnings came out two hours late. What do you think happened here? Yeah, I mean, I think we were I think we were thinking this might hit basically about, what, an hour ago, right? Or, or, or two hours by your recollection? I, I was looking on the Bloomberg Top Live blog. We had a, a list of the past times, and they were all sort of between 4 and 4.30. Um, this was definitely uh, very late, uh, but, you know, Tesla is always unpredictable. You're right, closer to one hour late. Uh, I want to bring in Ivan Feinseth, Chief Investment Officer at Tigers Financial Partners. Well, we have the numbers now. So, Ivan, you know, first of all, what's your take on the numbers and does it bother you that they were late? Um, no, companies usually, when they say aftermarket, could be anywhere from, you know, right at four o'clock on up to five or so. Um, and, you know, the, the numbers with Tesla can usually be all over the place. Um, there's really just an interesting dichotomy that you really have an incredible company that makes a great car. I was just at the factory back in uh, March and drove a Model 3 performance, which was very impressive. And then you have the flip side of Elon and his fighting with the SEC and, um, you know, that the hard time they have meeting projections. Sometimes they exceed them, sometimes they miss them, and the volatility of the stock. But, I mean, the basis to me, the company makes an incredible car. They really have a tremendous first mover advantage and leadership position in electric vehicles. And uh, then you have the volatility of the stock and um, many extreme views from very pessimistic to very optimistic. Well, and I wonder, Max, who's to blame in that case? Tesla makes very ambitious projections and even Elon Musk admits, you know, we don't always hit our projections. So why be so ambitious in, in those projections? And perhaps try to be more realistic. I mean, it's part of the secret to the company's success over the last 10 years. I mean, one thing that Tesla's been very good at is saying, don't look at what's happening now, you know, look at the future and telling this future futuristic story, whether, you know, w back when they were making an, uh, an electric sports car that they were only selling, you know, to a few hundred people, they were saying, no, 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 this is, you know, the real thing is the luxury sedan. And, and you know, that's sort of gone on. And th that started to sort of break down around the Model 3 because the Model 3 was kind of the end of the of the big Elon Musk plan and I think what we saw um, earlier this week with this big autonomy day where Tesla spent four hours kind of you know boring analysts ears off about the, the nuances of its autonomous vehicle technology is the company trying to get people to refocus on the future and and if you believe that you know sure these robo taxis are going to be a big thing and it can happen that quickly well then you know you as an investor are going to are going to hop on board with that. Shares uh, slightly up right now in, in after hours trading. Investors were expecting a tough quarter, Ivan. You know, when it comes to uh, the actual numbers, yes, they make a great car, as you say, but what's your take on the quarterly performance, which does matter to investors and does matter to analysts, despite how good the product may be? Well, analysts have to go by, you know, some level of guidance from the company to build models and try to assess some kind of share price value. I think that Tesla would have been better served being a little bit more conservative in their projections, both from production and uh, also profitability. I mean, they really are in a net investing and R&D stage to grow this company. So the fact that they were going to be pro or they were profitable at the, you know, originally going to be at the end of the last year and now not going to be profitable and now back to investing. I mean, they do have a lot more investment to do with the build out of the Model Y, of the semi truck and of other new models they want to bring to market, along with the ongoing development of their autonomous technology. Even though I think we are still many, many years away from actually getting into a car and just saying, drive me home with no driver actually driving it. And there will have to be a lot more infrastructure. The fi it's, autonomous vehicles are going to depend on the 5G network. They're going to depend on cars communicating with each other, communicating with traffic signals and stop signs and the road itself. But I would say that Tesla does have an impressive autonomous uh, capability or autopilot capability right now. I have not, I didn't see the one most recently demonstrated at on the Monday event. However, a few months ago, I did test the autopilot system, and it was very impressive. Right, and Musk certainly excited about the self-driving potential future. Talking about robo taxis, Tesla robo taxis coming with out drivers very very soon. Uh, the call 
starting in about 10 minutes if it starts on time, Max. But I have to ask you about this Shanghai car fire. We're still trying to get to the bottom of it, but this video from an underground car park in Shanghai shows a Tesla parked, apparently off, smoking from beneath, and within minutes being engulfed in flames. Tesla has said they sent a team here. Do we have any new information about why this happened? No, and I mean, it should be said that, you know, the, so there's a Chinese news outlet, the paper reported uh, that, that, you know, they think it was a battery problem, which when you're talking about an electric car is basically, doesn't really say anything because, because anytime um, these lithium ion uh, products, products powered by lithium ion batteries catch on fire, which does happen from time to time, you know, it's always a battery problem. So, um, you know, assuming that this is this is true it's not some kind of doctored video or whatever you know Tesla's gonna look into it and try to figure out was there some problem with some part you know some some piece of its supply chain or whatever and you know it seems like the worst case scenario is, is some sort of recall I mean it, you, you should you should it's worth pointing out though that these kinds of things have happened before um, you know like I said it's not it's not super common but 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 Tesla's have caught in fire in the past and and the company has been able to, to deal with it it's kind of one of the risks of of, of dealing with this technology. Mm. Uh, new headlines continuing to come out from the earnings report. Tesla expecting to deliver between 90 and 100,000 cars in the second quarter. Ivan, uh, there has been some concern about demand topping out. Is that a sign of demand topping out or is that demand still going strong? It looks to me like there's still strong demand. Uh, from what I believe, there is a significant backlog of orders, especially for the Model 3.